Restaurant Unstoppable. What the most successful restaurateurs know that you don't. Just having those systems kind of shored everything up, you know, because I had, I was proud of my food. I was proud of my brand. The thing I had to shore up was I had to learn how to be a businessman mm -hmm. and how to operate this. And, and uh, Mike helped me do that. And around 2000. 12 ish 13 um i didn't get into this to like grow a bunch of restaurants either and even sitting here with you right now i don't have some number in mind out there that i want to grow um i just i grow them opportunistically but another opportunity came along and we opened up a second one and that was a whole nother learning curve that that was in 2012 yeah that was that was something that mike had fa not complete but fairly you know limited um that was just getting up and getting in the ring and getting your your face punched in and figuring out how to stop this guy from hitting you in the face. You know, yeah. that's not something Mike could hold my hand in the ring and be like, okay, now, do, you know, bob and weave right here and come around the left and jab him in the side and then hit the right on the, yeah. on the chin. So, um, yeah, and then it just, it, it, I just was really maturing then in my, at that point in my career. So this is six years in. You're, what, 33, 32, 34 when you got started. So you're almost 40 at this point. Mm -hmm. um, this is when you're going from one to two locations. What was the biggest challenge of going from one to two locations, and, and how did you overcome those challenges? People. Yeah. That's where I learned the lesson that the human capital, human asset, and investing in that, your employees, is, is the most important thing to grow. How did you learn that lesson? Hard. Yeah. The hard way. What Just the turnover, losing people. You're worried about your hourly wage and like i can't pay this guy another 50 cents an hour because a lot of people employees have also you know another thing that's in my opinion screwed up about the restaurant business is that people 95 percent everybody gets promoted they get promoted on tenure yeah you know bobby's the bar manager i'm i'm just a bartender pat's a bartender um you know joe's the gm and bobby came in high bobby you're fired well what does joe do does Joe go through a recruiting firm and try to find a bar manager that has shown that he can manage his cost? And no, he doesn't do that. Pat, you've been here for five months. You should be the bar manager. Whether Pat's ready to be the bar manager or not. Yeah. Right? So there's that tenure thing through promotion on that end. And then employees, hourlies feel like, okay, I've been here six months. I hadn't gotten a raise. Hey, I want a 25 cent raise. And, and people say, you know, they start getting – backed into a corner like oh, gosh i gotta give him a raise or he's gonna leave well i would rather over pay a little bit now this is the lesson i learned but let me tell you something you ain't getting another raise until you create more value mm. how do they know i what? tell all my people here no don't come ask me for a raise come ask me to be trained on something else so you can be more valuable okay then i'll give you a raise okay do you like, do you have that – is that built? Like, how do, you, how do you track that? How do you know that they're actually bringing more value? Well, the more things they know how to do, and then you take in just common sense stuff. It's like they show up every day. Yeah. They, there's, they don't – you know, you know the people who give you the BS excuses, yeah. you know, even if they're not trying to be malicious about it, you know. And this I, – I judge everybody, first my first impression, on their gait, how yeah. they walk. If they walk with, like – Okay, A to B, B to C, B to D. But if they're A to B, and then I'm going home here, and A to and B to C, <laughs> I freaking guy's Dally out. Dally. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I I look. It's the it's how they carry themselves. Yeah, but you know? I, back to the this lesson. And do they care? Do they care about the brand? Do they do they do they mm. go out and drink with their buddies and they're wearing Martin's barbecue at the bar, or do they go out and drink with their buddies and they got to get that Martin's barbecue shirt off? Uh, when they're proud of where they work they won't think about going out with their work clothes on. I want to talk about how you make people proud of the brand. I want to get into that, but I want to kind of sew up this last lesson real quick. Cause I think it's huge is that like you have to give people, um, like it, what you share with me reminds me of Nick Cirillo in Nick's pizza up in, um, Evanston or Evans up in, by Chicago. Um, and that idea that you have to basically give people like, like it's a, you, you don't just ask for a raise. You show me, like, you give them, you, you can even, even paint that picture. You learn how to do these X, the, these five things, and you hit that point, you take the test or whatever, and you show me that you're competent in these five things. You, earn, you, you create tiers, right? And then I think he even goes as far as giving people different hats, that when you reach a certain tier, you get a new hat to know that you, res that you can handle those different uh, skills. I mean, I don't know if you did anything like that. You have no like idea that. how bad all of us want people. There is so much opportunity in life 
I don't care if it's a restaurant business. When I took my job with Nations Bank, there was this funny, eccentric sales manager that was across the trading desk named George Ellison. And George would like, it, there was hazing back then, you know, like, okay, eat a habanero powder, here's five grand. If you vomit, you don't get it, you mm-hmm. know, like stuff like that. But on Fridays when everybody would go to the bar, George would ask me to run an errand for him or whatever. And I would do it. I knew the game. You know, I, I was smart enough, you know, just from sports. You knew there was some hazing with seniors. Well, that's kind of what was happening. And George actually complimented me one day. He said, you know what the problem with people is? He goes, um, if all you ever do is what you're getting paid to do, that's all you're ever going to do. Mm. So, you know, doing the extra thing and just caring, man. Some people care and some people don't. And it's hard to find the ones that care. Yeah. You know, and that's just it, there's no magic science to that. If there was, I would have a thousand restaurants open if I could f- solve that problem, you know, but. 